So, what is a vector? Well, a vector is something with direction and magnitude, but in order to understand a vector, you need to understand the points that make up a vector. And here we're talking about the x, y, and the z axis. So, we have our friendly little ruler here that we have built with three different ruler props, and we're going to use that to explain what the x, y, and z vectors quickly are. So, we have the uh, y axis, which is up and down, we have the x-axis, which is left to right. If you've taken any sort of class that ever had you working with graphs and, and having lines drawn on graphs and points on graphs, you probably recognize the y-axis and the x-axis. The nice thing about 3D games is that adds in the z-axis, which is this thing going forwards and backwards. This gives you a 3D environment of space here. So with x, y, and z, this kind of creates the points in space that will make up vectors. And your character moves across these in different ways. So we have our character right here. And what we can do on our characters is, is actually show these vectors in uh, happening. So we're going to add a new line here. And we're just going to display something above our character. So we're going to say do display. Go over to uh, position. And we're just going to say position. And we're going to display that above the player we jump into test mode and we see three numbers on top of the player and those are the X point, the Y point, and the Z point. So as we're moving around you'll see that X and Z, the first one and the third one, are increasing or decreasing. But Y is not increasing or decreasing because Y is up and down. So we jump and we see Y increasing and decreasing and we don't see X or Z increasing or decreasing. So the really great thing about these is these are creating points inside of a world that we can reference and do interesting or unique things with. We can store these as variables. We can create certain things at certain points in the world. Vector points can be very useful for a lot of different things. So what we can do is we can save the position of something or the three different points of it on the map as a vector variable. So let's go ahead and let's do that on our player. Let's go inside and on the one side we are going to say do, let's go to values, vector, create a new vector variable called start and we are going to make that equal to the player's position. So that is setting start is equal to the x point of the player, the y point of the player, and the z point of the player at the very beginning of the map because it's only happening once. So now let's go ahead and display something at that position that we've set. So let's add a new line here and let's say uh, display. Let's go over to our gallery picker and let's just randomly choose the acorn. And we're going to say uh, position at world position start. So let's go back into test mode. And now you see this acorn staying at the position that we started at. So we're running away and we see the acorn kind of shrinking because we're further and further away from our position. And this can be really useful in creating things like re like respawn and checkpoints. So this is really simple. What we can just put here is on this character we can say when started to is dead then we can set its position to be equal to its start position and then we can go ahead and revive it so let's go to combat and let's say revive and we probably want to go inside of our player and make it so that they are not destroyed after death, which we can find here. Destroy after death, turned off. Let's actually create an enemy right here. So we'll have a goblin. And let's set down our player's health down to some really low numbers so we can see this take effect pretty soon. So we're going to set our player's health to, uh, let's say, 2. So we jump into test. And we're going to have this goblin hit us. And look at that. 
it has revived me back at this initial starting point. So let's have the goblin kind of follow me away from this start point. And he's going to hit me again. And I'm back at the start point again. So that just shows you a bit on how vectors and vector variables can be really useful in things that you are building inside of Project Spark. Project Spark is where players create and creators play. What better way to be inspired than to see what's possible? This will surely spark your imagination. Now, how do we begin?